this one right here the conspiracy theorists gonna eat this one up four cops and then the unthinkable all live in the same town all on the same forest all in the same day let's get into it november 6 2023 four members of the los angeles sheriff department have died by suicide according to a statement from the department the officers whose names were not released out of privacy were one former and three current employees the four employees all died within 24 hours of each other and the homicide bureau is investigating all four deaths this year alone 83 law enforcement officers have died by suicide according to first help a first responder suicide group when former police officer Omar Delgado heard the news of four current and former members of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department dying by suicide in less than 24 hours last week. He understood. It's like a pressure cooker. If you don't slowly let go of that steam little by little, when it does pop, it's over because it's going to be such a big explosion. Delgado was one of the first officers on the scene of the Post nightclub attack in Orlando on June 12, 2016. He suffers post-traumatic stress disorder from that night and has attempted to take his own life twice. They just popped, he said, and announced the deaths of the three current and one retired member. The LA County Sheriff's Department said homicide detectives are investigating each of the four deaths independently. The names of the deceased were not disclosed. We are stunned to learn of these deaths and it has sent shockwaves of emotion throughout the department, Sheriff Robert Luna said in a statement. Richard Pippen, president of the Association for Los Angeles Deputy Sheriffs, told CNN he is very confident there was no correlation between the deceased members who died between Monday morning and Tuesday morning. The deaths were unprecedented, with so many in a single agency in such a short time frame begging the need for enhanced mental health resources and incentives for officers to recognize, seek, and accept help when they need it. The losses hit an agency dealing with low morale and severe staffing shortages. In some cases, officers are working up to 70 hours per week. They aren't seeing their families. It's an arduous, stressful job, Pippin said. The Sheriff's Department in Los Angeles County isn't alone. Police agencies nationwide have been struggling to fill and keep their ranks since the COVID-19 pandemic and the 2020 death of George Floyd which sparked protests and scrutiny of law enforcement biases across the country. From one call to the next, law enforcement officers meet people at the most difficult moments in their lives. And to deal with that, such a high percentage of your waking hours, week after week, month after month, is wearing on them. It's heartbreaking to see um, these people that I used to work with um, take their lives for just ridiculousness that's going on within the department. Soren Prime is speaking out in hopes of helping the L.A. County Sheriff's deputies who would like to, but can't. Anybody, anybody that speaks up about anything that's, that's wrong within the department will be met with retaliation no matter what, hands down. Soren used to be a proud L.A. County Deputy Sheriff until the workload simply became too much. I will work six days a week, 16, 18 hour shifts. And that leaves us with really no time to do anything. The majority of the other partners that I've worked with will work even more than that. They will have zero days off, sometimes two, three weeks in a row, sometimes a month. When Soren expressed to his superiors that he was starting to suffer from depression and anxiety, he says no one cared. They literally gave me more hours. They told me, you signed up for this job. You don't belong here as a deputy sheriff. Learning about the recent four deputy suicides angered Soren enough to go public. He says there are many other suicides we never hear about. You just, you know, you ask, hey, whatever happened to deputy so-and-so? And the common thing to say is, oh, they ate their gun. <laughs> and we're like, what? How is that possible? We just saw him yesterday. And, you know, they just shrug it off. The resistance among police officers to speak out is rooted in a fear of how it will impact their jobs. Because they know that the department has a liability concerns when it comes to sending a person out in public with a gun while knowing they're experiencing emotional or psychological difficulties. It's the result of stigma around mental health ingrained in police culture, which perpetuates an attitude to 
suck it up and move on, according to Charles Ramsey, a former chief of the Metropolitan Police Department in Washington, D.C. Ramsey recalled witnessing the most gruesome scene in his 50-year career in law enforcement when he responded to a crime scene where five people had been executed. To see something like that, it's just not normal, he said. So what do you do? You push it down. You suppress any emotion. But it doesn't mean it's not there. And if it goes untreated, over time, it builds up. And the ones that need it the most are the ones less likely to reach out and try to get help, Ramsey said. Despite efforts to lessen the stigma, law enforcement officers still fear the consequences of raising mental health concerns to their superiors. When Omar Delgado responded to the Pulse nightclub shooting, he saw the horrors where a gunman executed 49 people and wounded dozens of others. He spent hours inside the Pulse nightclub with the dead as the standoff with the gunman continued. He was held as a hero by many for his actions, but haunted by the carnage. By the end of 2017, Delgado lost his job at the department where he worked for nearly a decade because of PTSD. A doctor hired by the agency evaluated him as unfit for duty. He now works for private security. Delgado said the post tragedy was a turning point for police officers warming up to the idea of sharing mental health concerns about asking for help. But when Delgado was fired, he said it sent a clear message to other officers that the same could happen to them.